thinking about getting into in-water surf photography, here's a rundown of all the gear you're gonna need. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now in-water surf photography is one of my favorite things to do, and if you're a surfer, ocean lover, and photographer, it's an amazing way to combine all of your passions into one element. Now I've been doing in-water surf photography around the world for the last few years, including the likes of the Maldives, Solomon Islands, South Africa, and here in Australia. So if you're looking at getting to in-water surf photography, here's a full breakdown of what's in my kit bag so you can get started. Now obviously the core of your in-water surf photography kit is gonna be the camera itself. And making the right decision here can make a massive difference further down the line and on the quality of images and videos you can capture. Now for me, the Sony A6300 is my camera to go to. It's one of my favorite travel cameras. Um, it's a Sony mirrorless camera, so I've made the uh, decision recently to move from bulky digital SLRs to the mirrorless style of camera uh, because they're small, compact, and they're also really good value for money as well. Uh, now, I could have gone for one of the newer uh, Sony A-series, uh, like the A6400 or anything like that, but the 6300 was great value and did everything I need for in-water surf photography. Uh, you can shoot up to 8 frames a second in terms of imagery. Uh, it shoots full 4K at 30 frames a second, or if you drop it down to 1080p, you can do 60 frames a second for those really nice slow-mo shots. Um, in terms of lenses, I'm shooting with the 16 to 50 kit lens. It gives me a good bit of scope to zoom while I'm in the lineup or pan out and get some nice wide angle shots as well. Um, a lot of people also do prime lenses for in-water surf photography or even zoom lenses too, depending on where you're shooting and what your style is. I like to get really in amongst the action, so this lens is absolutely perfect. So yeah, Sony a6300 with the 16 to 50 lens is my go-to gear. Now the other absolutely key part of your in-water surf photography kit is gonna be your underwater housing. Uh, now for me, this is the liquid eye housing, which I've been using for a couple of years now, and it's served me really well. Uh, liquid eye are really good. They're made in Bali, Indonesia, um, but they do ship worldwide. So no matter where you are, you can get one shipped to you. Uh, they're really nice and lightweight. They're made out of durable plastic, and um, so they're really hard wearing as well. Some of the other housing brands out there like Aquatech or SPL come in aluminium and they can be a bit bulky and heavy, but these are really nice and lightweight and compact, especially when teamed up with a small mirrorless camera. Another good thing I love about the liquid eye water housings is they all come with the full uh, control panel on the back. So whether you're in the water or about to gear up to go in the water, you've still got control over everything on the camera. You can also play back your images while you're in the water as well, so you can see what's going on and you have a lot of control. Uh, now, when you're looking at underwater housings as well, pistol grip is an absolute must. It's really good to be able to kind of shoot with that kind of angle. You know, you can put it up in the air, you can keep it down low, or you can shoot through the viewfinder as well. But the pistol grip is a really good bit of kit. Uh, now in terms of ports, this comes with, uh, you can choose the ports you want with your liquid eye housing, so you can team it up with your best kind of lens that you're shooting. Again, this fits the 16 to 50 absolutely perfectly. Uh, they do also do dome ports, so if you want the really nice kind of split screen image uh, thing, you've got that option as well. But yeah, liquid eye water housings, they're about 1300 Aussie dollars, so they're not the cheapest bit of kit, but underwater housings in general are really expensive anyway, so be aware of that when you are budgeting for your gear. And in terms of camera models that the Liquid Eye covers, they cover all of the major Nikon, Canon, and Sony uh, cameras. So you've got a huge range of choice for all kind of lenses, and you can get all your accessories and things shipped as well. Uh, when you are ordering your housing, I'd also recommend getting a couple of the acrylic lenses uh, as spares, because they do get scuffed occasionally. Uh, so if you have those in your kit bag, you don't need to reorder them later. But yeah, Liquid Eye water housing is my go-to housing. Now alongside the camera and the housing, my other core bit of kit that I don't go anywhere without is headgear. Now, depending on where I'm shooting, that's either a helmet or a sun hat. Um, now, if I'm shooting out here in Australia, or I'm shooting on a heavy break or a crowded break, gaff helmet is my go-to, provides you a nice bit of protection, especially if it's a busy lineup. Um, you just wanna basically avoid any accidents. Being in the water, you're kind of more paying attention to what's happening in front of you in terms of what you're shooting than what's going on behind you. So it's good to have that little bit of protection on your head. I've actually also customized mine, so I've got my Instagram handle on the back. So if people are seeing me in the lineup, they know how to find me and grab their pictures. 
Uh, now, if I'm out shooting kind of more peaceful kind of in-water shots or it's a much less crowded break or a nice mellow break, I'll just go with a plain old sun hat. I use the Kyola hats. Um, they're really nice and comfortable. They dry really quick. They've got really nice lightweight chin straps so they're not going anywhere. But also more importantly is the peak flicks up as well. So it's really handy if you're shooting, you can just flick that up and uh, to kind of get the peak out of your way. Uh, but if you are swimming around, you can flick it back down and have that sun protection. But yeah, whether I'm shooting in crowded conditions or empty lineups, I will have something on my head, a bit of sun protection and a bit of protection from other surfers as well. Now the final core piece of my kit is fins. And for me, this is the Daffin range. Um, I've tried out a few different fin brands, but the Daffins are really nice and comfortable. They're made from 100% Malaysian rubber. So they're really comfortable on your feet, which is really important. The last thing you wanna be doing is going out shooting and getting heaps of blisters. Uh, they do come in a whole kind of color schemes as well. So you can customize it to your own personal taste. Uh, these are the Vizsla uh, Pro model ones, uh, super comfortable. They've got a really nice solid bottom plate, which is great if you're shooting somewhere where you might be standing on a bit of like rock or maybe reef, or you just want that bit of protection getting in and out of the water. But yeah, a good set of fins is really gonna help you out. It's gonna help you power around the lineup, keep your positioning and get you out of trouble when those big sets are coming through. So yeah, another really good investment for your in-water photography kit. Now a few other little accessories that I don't leave home without uh, is in my little grab bag of kit as well. Uh, these are just a few accessories that I find are really helpful on any shoot so I don't leave home without them. Um, so the first thing in there is one of these air blaster things, really good for cleaning out your kit, keeping your camera all dust free, also blasting out those layers of sand once you're done shooting so that's a really handy piece of kit. Uh, next up is zinc. Uh, you're going to be getting blasted by the sun while you're out there, so some good zinc is essential. I use sun and earth zinc, which is made here in Byron Bay in Australia. 100% natural, eco-friendly, smells amazing and really does the job. Uh, next up, nice and simple, an Allen key. Get your camera in and out of the housing, so having that with you at all times, even if you do load the camera before you head out and shoot, really handy to have. Uh, then I've also got a microfiber cloth. Uh, so not only does this keep the camera clean, but I also use it for keeping the lens uh, waxed up at the beginning. Um, and that's the final part of the bag is a candlestick. Uh, might seem a bit weird, but a candlestick is the best way to keeping water droplets off the lens of your camera. So you give it a bit of a wax up before you go in, buffer it up with a microfiber cloth, and you'll find that, that those uh, water droplets just bead up and run straight off the lens. So yeah, that's my little grab bag of accessories. I never leave home without. Now another piece of kit I always keep around for my in-water surf photography is my GoPro. Um, so I'm on the GoPro Hero 9 now, really great stabilization, great frame rates for kind of slow-mo footage. You can adjust the kind of lens angle as well, which is really good for getting uh, kind of tighter shots and also more wide angle shots. Um, also paired up with a floaty handle so you don't lose it in the surf. And uh, this camera I use where mainly in kind of shore break conditions where I can get really up close and for uncrowded conditions so I can kind of really get into the action. Or if I do also want to get some shots of the surfers, like kind of hand the camera off so they can carry on down the wave, some really nice angles. Uh, the other good thing about the GoPro is a really great budget value way of getting into in-water surf photography as well. Uh, so if you don't really want to kind of shell out all that money on mirrorless cameras and in-water housings, give it a test out with the GoPro first. It is a bit more difficult because you don't have so much zoom or creative options available, but it's a really good bit of kit to test it out and you can use it for other things as well. Uh, the other good thing about the GoPro is I also have a mount for my liquid eye water housing, so I can mount the GoPro right on the top of the camera as well. It's a great way of being able to kind of shoot stills with the camera and then also shoot video with the GoPro on the top as well. Also gives you that little bit of extra memory, so if you, know, if you run out on one of your SD cards, you've got a backup camera as well. But yeah, the GoPro, another great addition to any in-water surf photography kit. And there you have it guys, that's a complete breakdown of my in-water surf photography kit that I personally use on the road to capture all my images. And if you have any other questions about in-water surf photography, uh, make sure you add them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And also check out the links in the description below as well for all my written guides for my photography gear, in-water surf photography tips, and also GoPro tips as well. That's it for this week guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.